Hello everyone and welcome to Shenanigans, that D&D Spelljammer campaign where science and magic collide and you contribute to the chaos. Hello players, how are you? Hello. Hello. Doing all right. Thank you. Doing all right. I just realized I hadn't quite tested all my equipment yet, so I'm not sure everything's working. So I'm going to hopefully hope this works. It does. Well, awesome. Yay. I'm glad that worked. The last little thing on my checklist that I forgot to check. Hi audience. How are you guys doing? We are Great. We're not audience. I, You're not the audience. For the audience. <laughs> you guys are right One of those days. Yep. So, yep. It is one of those. One, one of those years. We're doing what we can, though. Yeah, we're doing great. Uh, you may notice we are a player short tonight, and that's a, that's that's okay. We we uh, have designed this campaign with that in mind. Um, oh, good. I'm glad you guys are good. Um, so Ren had to take an evening off and uh, they will be back with us next week. So don't fret, don't worry. Um, lilacs, shenanigans, uh, and non-flirty flirtations uh, mm -hmm. will probably be back next Supremely week. Supremely non-flirty flirtations. <laughs> um, so yeah. So let's talk about our sponsors, World Anvil. Uh, World Anvil, the most uh, robust world building and campaign management software that exists on the internet today. You can go to worldanvil.com and uh, build your world, make a make an account and do the things and write all your stuff and organize your thoughts and um, get creative because they have prompts and things like that to help you uh, build your world. And if you uh, ever were at a loss for what you should work on next, just go to World Anvil, start typing uh, you know, one particular thing in, pull up a couple of drop downs, and then it will start asking you a million questions uh, about, uh, uh, about whatever it is you're working on. And then you will have a lot of things to think about. So if you ever are at a loss for creativity, go to World Anvil. Um, when after the, you can do that for free, and then after uh, when you're ready to ramp up and get some customization options and add more players into your campaigns and things, you can sign up to be a guild member. Uh, over there and join the family. So go to worldanvil.com uh, and sign up today and light up the forge. Doing really well today. Go to Die Hard Dice. DieHardDice.com is our next sponsor. Uh, our other sponsor, I should say, not our next, our other sponsor. And uh, Die Hard Dice makes quality dice gaming accessories. Um, I understand they have a little bit of a shipping delay right now because of everything going on, which is understandable. Who doesn't right now? Uh, but uh, you can still go to diehardice.com, use the coupon code GOONIES to get 15% off your first or next order. Um, you can get to use that code once. Uh, and um, you can get some of the highest quality gaming components out there. Accessories. I think that's the right word. Gaming accessories. Uh, Gling dice, dice trays, uh, the scroll of rolling, which is one of my favorites. It's a little uh, zip up leather roll that holds dice and becomes a, a dice rolling tray, which is really incredible. Um, and uh, I think they, have they released the one that they partnered with? Uh, um... Level up? No, the other one. No, the, the map maker. Um, I'm blanking on names Oh, Devin today. Rue. Devin Rue. Devin Rue. Yeah, they, yes. they released that yes, one, right? Yeah, did. okay. So if you're familiar with Devin Rue's maps, and you should be if you play this game, since her maps are now featured in, in almost every new release of D&D content, um, you'll be very uh, familiar with, with her work. And so you can get that now on, on these scrolls of rolling, which are amazing. So go to dieharddice.com, uh, die use your coupon code, uh, and roll with the best. I almost said light at the forge again, and that wouldn't be right. But they're metal dice, mm -hmm. so maybe. Um, all right. And then, of course, Nerdsmith.org. That's who we are. Uh, you go to Nerdsmith.org to see all the other amazing shows and content that we put out. And I don't just say amazing because it's ours. Because it's not just ours. It's actually we have a whole group of people. We've got like 30 different people that are making all this content. Um, we've got new content coming out all the time. We've created a bunch of new shows just in the last few weeks that you should come and see, uh, including um we've got uh well, well let's go through our schedule real quick what's what's next week no i mean what's next week what's tomorrow tomorrow is wednesday tomorrow is, is we've got wednesday the power hour, power hour uh with angela and then thursday we've got uh no brainer no brainer which is which, which is, is going to be a show thing. head to head yes the show head to head which will have three it's a trivia show um which will have uh three different uh groups of shows people i believe kyle and uh, our moderator, Jesse, will be representing Shenanigans. Woo! Woo! Um, Represent! 
and uh, we'll have two other Nerdsmith shows with their heads. I know, I think I, I heard that uh, Kata Goodness wants a couple of seats. I'm still working on the third. We'll see what happens there. Uh, and then um, and then Friday, we've got uh, Fireside Chad with uh, our, our very own Chad from Kata Goodness, who is a mental health professional. He talks about mental health uh, issues and how to cope with everything that's going on right now. Uh, in this crazy day and age, and he does that for an hour on uh, on Friday afternoons, and then Friday evenings uh, we 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 kick off the shoes, uh, and we toss off our uh, re reprehensions. No, <laughs> our apprehension, and we and we go and we do uh, nurse with things. It's hard out. We do some karaoke with Twitch things um, on some of the creators, so you can come along and see that. Uh, every Friday night, and then next Monday we've got Saturday. Oh, we Saturday show oh, shoot! I almost skipped something. I keep forgetting because that's that's really new. Um, we're only on our third episode this Saturday of Homebrew Studio, but it's a second season, so it's coming back and it is better than ever. A lot more audience interactions and engagements, and, and we're we're building some really amazing stuff. That so you can come and see that uh, on Saturday, and then Monday, um, Monday we've got a Reader's Corner. Brangela and oh my god if you didn't hear the story last night it was amazing uh, it, was delightful. it was totally delightful if you ever want to know where dragons come from yes. go listen to or where they went episode. I think it's more of a where they went or where Is they it, could come from or where again. they could come from again dun, dun, dun. <laughs> or what you should feed your dragons that turn into things but not the actual things themselves Mm. Only if you're sure that dragons turn into them. This will make way more sense if you go listen if to you haven't stuff. listened to it you're confused now I sense that it's okay <laughs> go see Reader's Corner uh, you can see it on our Twitch uh, uh, thing we're over. Each, uh, this is something I didn't know until last night every episode is a standalone on those things it's not a, it's not a yep. uh, well in this so, particular instance the Book of Dragons are a bunch of short stories, short stories so yeah. each chapter is a separate story you don't have to see any of them to get the, yeah. the one so I'm if reading. you just want to hear an awesome story read by an awesome voice actress then come along and you can hear so um that is a great team name. What? Holy shoot. What I miss? Barb IQ. Mm -hmm. Barbecue for Kyle and Jesse. Barb IQ. I, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Came up with it. I'm very That's excited awesome. by this. Well, that'll be Thursday, uh, 7 p.m. PST, or 6 p.m. PST. Sorry. Come watch us get grilled. <laughs> You know, Heather, if the timing was right, you and Russ should be a should be a team. I feel like it would be unfair, but it would be fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure uh, how that fair it should that would be, be a masters onto the show. I I, I honestly um, I think Russ really sealed it for me when the question turned to Doctor Who and it was name name one of the actors that played a doctor, and uh, he and Kai were going back and forth. And after about four, Kai had to give up, and and he he's like, oh, do you want to hear the rest? And he just started going off, and he and so I'm like, yeah, there's been thirteen doc. No, there there's been way more, evidently, and a lot of different things, and and Russ yep. Russ, Russ knows them all. Russ, but mm -hmm. he, Russ. he likes likes Man, Doctor Who. You're amazing. Okay. Hi, medic. We love you too. Medic. All right, I think we've been goofing off uh, long enough now. Do I have anything else to have to Oh, I do. I have to talk about how uh, you can support our stream uh, and where, where the, all that money goes. Um, so where does that money go? Let's talk about that first. First off, it goes to support all the creators on this network. It pays our bills. It pays for our behind-the-scenes stuff. It pays for the, the, the fun things you see on the Twitch channel here. Um, you know, it, it pays for uh, a lot of things. And, uh, and, and this show pays the bills where all the other shows, they go... Uh, uh, this week, these few last few weeks have gone to support our creators directly, um, as we have uh, tried to help out uh, specifically with with creators that are hurt, have been hit really hard by the COVID uh, crisis. So, uh, but this show pays the Nerdsmith bills, so that's why um, we like to uh, ask for your support here as well. You know, we ask for your support all week, but uh, and you do, and you support us like crazy, which we really appreciate. Um, so how do you support the stream? Well, let's talk about it. For $5, well, first off, way down in the doobly-doo, 
Um, you can see the uh, link to tip this show for $5. You can gift a reroll to the players or the DM. You just have to let us know which. Uh, it goes into a pool for the players. They can just pull from as they need to. Angela is the mistress of the reroll pool. Um, mm -hmm. The lifeguard of the reroll pool. Let's. I like the that. Lifeguard, lifeguard of the, the reroll re pool. pool. I like that. Uh, and uh, and we'll, we'll help. Currently, we have eight there. re rolls in our party. Pool. Nice. Even it's after the two years last. Oh yeah, because we had a hype train last week. Yeah. Hype train's the other way we to get re rolls. We did. Um, a lot of rolls that day. Uh, yeah. Oh, suicide. Thank you. All right, starting already. This is how you support okay. it. Yes, it is. Thank you. So for $15, you, we can spin yeah. the Wheel of Causality, and we'll show you how that works in just a second, as Medic just had us spin the Wheel of Causality, but Medic has to tell us who is being affected by the Wheel of Causality. Um, and so we can put that uh, put that right into action. Um, and there's just a bunch of fun things that we like to torture our players with. Uh, one of the newest ways you may have seen last week was a game we call Who's Line, which is blatantly stolen from the show Who's Line, uh, and the game they play called Who's Line. Uh, and um, uh, basically they had uh, little uh, lines Hello. that they had to work into every day Role playing, uh, and they didn't get to see the lines beforehand. They had to read them live. Twenty five dollars allows you to introduce an NPC. Uh, this one is uh, scary for me, but uh, fun for you. So you can tell me the name, um, the uh, the 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 race, the the look, the feel, and maybe a little bit about why they're they you think they might be there. Uh, I will introduce them as soon as I can, um, and uh, um, that's how we got Jeremy, the amiable astral narwhal. Um, is that the only one this game so far? It is. Possibly. It's the only one the game this far. So, um, yeah, I think so. Yes. Um, but in the last one, we got Brindlehooves the Unicorn. Uh, we got um, it's not TJ Hooker. What was the what was the name of the of the tortoise? TR Toys. Oh. TR Toys. TR Toys. TR Toys. Uh, and, and quite a few others. So. Froggy and right. his Froggy his Rock. His Rock Watson. Uh, W.A. Stone. W.A. Stone. Stone. Uh, okay, so for $50, you can do DMX Machina. This is the 30-second DM powers to a player. Tell me which player, and we will start a timer. They get 30 seconds to affect the game however they wish. They get, I'll set the scene. They can take over from there, uh, kind of describing and setting up any benefits that they wish. They have complete DM fiat at that point. They can do whatever they want. I will work with the consequences. Um, but they also understand that if they break the campaign completely, then there's nothing I can do. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so bits. Bits also improve the health of the ship during the next session. So you see down below, we're at 20% already. Um, so if you give bits, the, uh, the the health of the ship improves. Last week, we got to 200%, so 200.4. Uh, so uh, we're getting something a little extra special this week. We're getting individual rewards, which we'll talk about during the game. Uh, and then I think that's it. So let me go ahead and play our intro video, and then we'll be right back, and we'll get started. Okay. Bye.
All right. As we return uh, to uh, Captain Packard, who is sitting in their cabin, writing about their most recent mission, uh, the cruise most recent mission, uh, we get to listen in to to their wonderful voice. We're leaving port on a small moon. The inhabitants were welcoming and open, but very secretive about their culture. They wear leather wrappings from head to toe with goggles that covered their eyes. They call themselves the Dazlo people. They aren't from that moon, but have made it their new home for now. They're very good traders and very good arcanonists. We were very lucky that they had never before heard of wine coolers and luckier still that Darcy Dabblehop not only had an incredible supply, but also a nearly overwhelming desire to prove himself as part of the new crew. We traded several crates away in exchange for many personal creature comforts. Darcy decided on an arcane sewing machine and some sewing supplies. Chefflet took on a magical overhaul of the stove. Niesel decided he couldn't live without a new pet that looks like a furry jellyfish. It doesn't swim, it actually floats through the air. I've been assured that it's harmless. Jeremy decided on some hand-carved wooden rings that he could toss around with his horn. Lantern was the most peculiar. He asked for a thin strip of mithril, the width and length of his finger. The rest of the crew's choices were also interesting. For myself, I got a special amulet that would allow me to fly a few times per day. This will be very helpful if anyone starts drifting off again or if we are attacked. It's fashionable too, a single metal feather on a chain. So, crew, why don't we talk a little bit about what you got as part of your upgrade from last week. Uh, meeting with these Dazlo people, which were very secretive. They were very friendly, though. They just didn't talk about their culture or who they were. They don't involve themselves much. Um, they will be coming up more later. They're just being teased right now. But they are excellent traders. Uh, so what is it that you have wanted? Who wants to go first? Oh, actually, I, I forgot. We have something to do first. Oh, yeah, the wheel. <laughs> Should have done it before we got here. I love how nobody could be just testing my on screen right now. Oh, I am preparing a uh, a D one. Did we say case. who was getting this? Me. Oh, that's amazing. No, uh, all right. No. The old <laughs> razzle dazzle. You're familiar with this one. Mm -hmm. uh, so each scene for the rest of the night, you must include a quote from a non Disney musical, either character or song. So you must do that, or there will Mama. be penalties, uh, and you won't like them. All right. I didn't forget. I didn't forget. Um, I just I'll remembered later. Forget. Oh, it was Logo we're talking about. Um, <laughs> what I was doing before that. So who wants to go first? I can. All right, Flora, the one the one person that didn't DM me with what they wanted beforehand. So we'll, this is a surprise for me, too. Oh, I, maybe I misread your note. I thought it said to DM you if we had questions. I specifically bolded different parts because I wanted to avoid confusion, but it never works. It doesn't matter what I do. Uh, <laughs> but no, I think I think I did make it like if you if you thought, you know, I'm please go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just being playful. No worries. Um. So Flora got herself a very, very small, because it has to fit in her room, version of the uh, arcane garden that was done up in the cargo <laughs> hold. Okay. All right. All right. It's I'm very, down with that. It's very small. So you it's got not like one of those little tabletop herb gardens that, that you can buy from the those Bro Brooksmart? Bro like what is it? Brookstone? That. Yeah, probably or, maybe slightly bigger, just so that she can grow a couple of flowers or something in it yeah. too. But well, not, it could be bigger. But yeah, remember your room yeah. is ten by ten, so yeah, it's you probably go even like further back corner of her room. KB toys. 
I was just <laughs> seeing how, how far back in time he wants to go to random um, unique stores. <laughs> um, yeah, so just a small little flake flower bed in the corner of her room that she could grow something in. Okay, I think that's a great idea. I love that. All right, who's next? I'll go next. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go next. Uh, Curie got a... Um, it's like a... It almost looks like a little pedestal. Um, but she was told that it was a sort of illusory picture frame. Um, she, she was told it would create almost like a small illusion or like illusory bust of a, um, of a person that you know based on your recollections of that person. So it creates sort of like a little captured moment in time of your memory of that person kind of it uh, a little reminiscent of the way that like newspaper photographs work in the harry potter universe <laughs> like like how it's that it's that one it's, it's an animated gif of someone <laughs> in like a an illusion uh but relatively relatively small could like fit on a nightstand comfortably i love it all right Who's next? Dermot. I'll go. I so after the previous episode, I was thinking that it would be good to have a night light. So I went out looking for protective lights, and I found uh, this. It, it it it's a it's a butterfly globe. It, it's a butterfly, and it follows me around, and it, it casts light. That's adorable. Mm-hmm. And um, those who can't see in the dark can can be helped by it. I love it. What a, what a peach. Mm-hmm. All right. Kyle? So uh, what Dietrich got was a, um, you know, he's always been fond of uh, prestidigitation. It's always a useful spell, but... I uh, always thought that it was it was um, a shame. That, One second, I yeah. want to upgrade. Yeah. I want to change yours slightly. I want it to be an upgrade for an item you already have. Okay, I will have to look at my character sheet. Please come back to me. Oh no, no, there it's it's exactly what you're asking for, but it oh. just happens to be the thing you got the last time you were trading oh, with people. Okay, yeah. I just really so, want to see that become canon that you play that more often. Sure. So it's this the odd musical instrument that Dietrich got from the uh, kobold space uh, kidnappers um, is uh, is now able to anytime that Dietrich casts uh, the spell press digitation using this instrument, uh, it it allows him to make the object that he can create the tiny little trinket uh, permanent. However, the object is not as quite quite as durable as it would be if it had been actually manufactured it's in like a more paper mundane mache fashion. version. Of the but it's a fully functional stuff. version. It's like, oh, I forgot my room key. Oh, it broke. Oh no. <laughs> it's brittle, but it's yeah. it is the thing. That's cool. I like that. Um, and Piper, so Piper, you couldn't find or decide on anything uh, that would work for you. Um, even with the insistence that they really, they, they always want to make sure that they pay their debts. Um, and it wasn't until after you told them a story uh, about, about your pet uh, that they, uh, that they finally acquiesced and said, you know, that's fine. We understand that, you know, we can't, you know, we understand. So what was that? What was the story that you told of your, of your beloved pet? Um, Piper probably told the story of, um, how she got Cricket. Um, she had always wanted a pet and her, her parents uh, were very protective and 
it was kind of, um, of all the pets for her to pick, the idea that she wanted a, a giant snail uh, was kind of unheard of. And um, so she snuck out um, into the local forest and actually found um, a, a baby flail snail that had um, uh, lost its parent. And so she brought it back to uh, the house that she lived in and started feeding it and calling it um, Buttons. And her parents said, okay, you can't have a flail snail, so we'll get you Cricket. And then that's how she got Cricket, because they wouldn't let her keep the wild snail. But Piper One that determined... becomes a 10 foot tall monster. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Piper being absolutely determined to get what Piper wants made it happen in a so different way. So what was it that they got? Uh, they got her a, a, a giant snail, um, which grew to about, uh, probably, see, Piper is barely three feet tall, so it's about, it goes up to Piper's waist, this, um, this giant snail. Uh, so, and that is Cricket, who is a show, is a show, uh, quality, uh, giant snail. So and this is, is bigger than the be... normal giant snails that Tessa wants in real life. Mm -hmm. Cause Barely, those, cause but those, yeah. Those are only about nine inches tall, not eighteen I, inches. Okay, I, I'm also a bad judge of height. So yeah, okay. Yeah, so they come up to about. they come up to your knees, maybe a little bit taller. Yeah, uh, but, yeah. yeah. Knees or thighs. Okay, Piper. it's like a it's like a Piper dog for small. you. Yeah, it's like a dog. A very slow dog. That is how she got cricket. Um, awesome. and so you tell so you tell them about cricket and they 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 appreciate the story and they kind of let you on your way I agree monster is a harsh term have you met a flail snail yes <laughs> we did in the last campaign Uh, was bad. Bad. So. Oh God, Tessa, is that the baby? No, 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 no. That is not. Piper is not from Ashport or okay. anywhere near Ashport. What? Oh that be God! Piper was afraid it was a reference. Jesus! Might okay. as well have had a bowl of petunias um, on the wall or something. So at, at some point, the captain <laughs> comes by and lets each of you know the the most. Uh, the current, most current update uh, that uh, you guys are heading off to your next destination. That the the trading here in in, in this wild space has gone incredibly well, but um, you, you you're moving on now. Uh, they could not help you, unfortunately, find anything to do with your way home. However, uh, they did recommend uh, that you had towards. Uh, this the next sphere that, that you head towards is is a deep red, um, almost like uh, a ruby. It's a little farther away than a few others. You can hit a few others on the way, but um, it'll take you about a month and a half to get there. But they say that they at the red planet, the people there are the ones that map most of the systems around. Uh, they are the mo probably the most advanced group of people when it comes to spell jamming. So that is their recommendation. There are other places you can stop on the way. It's going to be a while, but that is where they recommend you head next. Heading's better than nothing. Well, um, the other piece of information uh, that they do confirm, uh, the at least out of character suspicions of the rest of you, uh, is that the people known as the Tide uh, are um, a, a group of spell jamming illithid um, and is a, an entire race of, of, of these uh, intelligent monsters and nope. the idea that one would have been separated uh, without some sort of residual link 
is interesting, but there is no way you would have survived had it had any sort of link. So something must have happened to that one. And they also say that if you know ever find out what, that they would be willing to trade heavily for it. On the last back on that planet we were just left from. Right, the Daslo. Did we did we recover its body? Did it die? It did like, die. Okay. And did were we still in possession of its body at that time or did someone dump it? I don't remember. I don't think that the body survived for some reason. I can't remember why that off the top of my head. Okay. It was the ship that disappeared, not the body. Oh, okay. Well, then you still got the body, yeah. Okay. I can't imagine the captain would have kept him on board for very long. So he Carry probably a ejected it. a little bit just to see. Yeah, he probably, yeah. but she probably wouldn't want to keep it on board very long. Okay. So it would have been, the, the body would have been gone by the time we got to the Dazzle easily. Okay. Couldn't but, risk a uh, chef like spilling soy sauce on it. <laughs> mm. Oh, oh no! It ended up on mm. my hibachi. So tragic. I it's still something in my funeral. head says that the body <laughs> vanished as well, but I guess not. Um, okay. <laughs> so um, you've got some time to to get to know your shipmates. Uh, Lilac has uh, secluded themselves away um, to make it easy, and uh, uh, <laughs> I just I don't like NPC PCs. Um, Lilac's just suffering Lilac is just from hiding such in different parts of the from such traumatic embarrassment from <laughs> they're just waiting for their face to stop being red from that conversation trying to, trying to figure out how to use the pillow that, she, that they were given what is this I like I like I was trying to describe it like a like a, a pillow with like a hole in the center like a donut pillow but I guess somebody caught divot and, and thought it just had like this, this divot or crease in the center. I'm like, like oh, cleft. it's a butt pillow. <laughs> All right. So it's either a butt pillow or a butt pillow. So I like it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, either literally a Everyone's butt pillow. Everyone's right. <laughs> so um, what would you guys like to do? Is there anybody you'd like to talk to? Anybody like you get to get to know better? Anyone within the party you'd like to talk to? Kiri would like to make sure that Jeremy gets his horn cozy. Oh, please, let's roleplay that out. Yep. Um, okay, so Jeremy is up uh, up on deck as you guys are traveling uh, through the wild space here. He uh, actually really enjoys wild space. Um, he says it's, it's a lot easier and a lot more freeing. It's like floating, but he can still seem to control where he goes with no issues or anything. Um, so, uh, so he really likes it. So he's got his little, uh, his little rings that he, he scoops up off the deck, tosses them in the air, swims up and goes and gets them, uh, one right after another, and then comes back down, puts them on the deck and, uh, and keeps going. These, so these three cute. different wood colored rings, dark wood, light wood, and kind of a, a medium color. Uh, and, uh, so yeah, so you, you, uh, you're going to go and see him. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Sure. So Curie has a, um, what looks like a folded, um, almost like a folded knit blanket. It's, it's large. It's a big stack. Um, and she looks for Jeremy and seeing him do the, the loop-de-loops and stuff, she kind of calls out to him. You're so terribly acrobatic. I'm so very impressed, dear. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> I have a gift for you. Oh, you don't have to do that. I don't need any gifts at all. Oh, well, we talked about it so long ago, and I felt like it was excellent practice. Oh, um, all right. And he, he puts his rings away uh, into their nice little felt-lined box uh, mm -hmm. and, and uh, kind of uses his horn to close the lid and then swims over to you. Well, now, this doesn't have to be for everyday use or all the time use. It's just okay. in the event that we're, we're in. What's your horn for, if you don't mind me asking? You can't just ask people what their horn is for. It depends on the person, but um, I'm going to assume. Does it get cold or anything? Does it? 
sure line of questioning i'm sorry anyway uh, and so she sort of like shakes out the um it looks like a wind sock but it's been like crocheted okay <laughs> and on it is a very large j in like like a block letter j like hanging like a flag off of it no like stitched into it okay like, like a weasley sweater well, i don't know why how is it a big j for no there is a big j yeah how is it big though when the horn is well, the thing is how big is this going on his horns i just meant it's a it's it's big enough to go on his horn and there's a j on all it. right Make the J as big or small okay. as is reasonable. I was just thinking there was like this big extra fabric it's just clear, hanging down off of it no, so you could fit the J. It's clearly monogrammed with Got Jeremy's it. Okay. initial. That that is what I meant to say. Um, so, as best I could figure out, this is going to be a this is a horn cozy. Is that like a tea cozy? Yes, but for you, oh, what's the tea cozy? Well, it's to insulate the tea kettle so that it stays warm. Okay. And so in this instance, you can use it as decoration or in the event that you somehow have some sort of regulatory temperature system that is somehow related to your horn, uh, the, the, this could help uh, keep you warm. Oh, and he kind of leans his horn down. I'm blind! And he falls down. Oh, good. Oh, good. Just kidding. Inside track. <laughs> like, I don't believe it. <laughs> okay. He immediately cried. <laughs> oh, goodness. You scared me. Well, do you like it? Do you need a mirror? Do you want to see what you look like with it? I, I've never seen what I look like. Oh, dear, you're magnificent. We must correct I've seen, I mean, I've seen what others of me look like. We all look the same, really. Well, then you have an estimation, but you have a lovely affectation now. Um, and so Curie will pull out, a, like, a hand mirror and oh, realize that, that, that she definitely makes me back unique. up a little bit and, like... <laughs> yes, and I, I hope you enjoy it. I, I, like to, I like to do this for all my friends. Oh, and okay. we're friends. It's very hard to tell us apart sometimes. Don't we have a problem now? Well, that's the spirit, that, uh, if that's a good thing. I, I suppose. I don't know. Well, then, I su then I suppose you're welcome. Uh, but I like it. Good. That was the important thing. Thank you for my gift. You enjoy. You're welcome, Jeremy. Well, now I have to figure out what the others want. Hmm. I usually default to just a handkerchief, but that feels a bit... Done. If it's done, then you don't have any more work to do. Mm -hmm. Overdone? Boring? They seem far more interesting than simply a monogrammed handkerchief would deserve. So I must think about this. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. You should make them cozies for their most important things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure Piper would want a hammer cozy. She very much likes the hard part being exposed to, to hit people. I think Dietrich's the same way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Dermot is a cozy. Uh, uh, He's just... very soft. Yes. He'd be a cozy I'll cozy. Think about it. <laughs> I like it. The way you think, dear. Well, I just wanted to make sure that uh, you got the gift before I forgot to make sure you got it. Curie, can I ask you a question? Of course, dear. You may always ask me a question. What do you do? In what way? I mean, I did just make that. Oh, you do this for a living? No, it's a hobby. What do I do for a living? is a little complicated and it varies from day to day um i make it i make other people's business my business so you steal people's businesses oh no 
I, hmm, how best to explain this? Information has value. What people know, who people know, how they know it, those sort of things. And many people don't realize how valuable those things can be to other people, so I treat those sort of things like um hmm. Kira stops for a minute and thinks really hard thinking about how a narwhal could understand espionage <laughs> I trade in secrets that's a big part of it but mostly I just like making friends oh I and... like making friends can you give me some examples of how of what you do Sure. I sometimes I have friends who need things from other friends, and so I make um, introductions. That's something I do sometimes. Um, and then other times there are people who don't do nice things, and the people that want to catch those people need a reason to arrest them and I can collect that sort of evidence for them. That's a thing I've done before. And Mostly I... Hmm? I really don't understand what you're saying. Hmm. Well... It's very complicated and very nuanced, dear. But for the most part... My job is to make friends with people and then hold on to those friends until they need something. And then I help them get it. Yes, but that doesn't say how you do it. That just says what the result is. Well, I'm very good at... I'm normally very good at talking to people. <laughs> Narwhals seem to be my blind spot, as it were. Mine's right in front of my horn. <laughs> I am very good at putting people at ease or making them feel important or making them feel seen when they want to be and that is a skill that many people find valuable being a professional friend is uh, very lucrative in my experience mm. okay well you're friends with people that's nice I like to think so. Well, what do you do? Um, I exist. I can understand that. Yeah, we, we migrate and make the herd bigger and get food. You know. The pod. Pod life sounds... Simple, but nice. Hashtag pod life. <laughs> What's a hashtag? Well. Anyway, thank you for talking I... to me. Oh, you're very welcome, Jeremy. I'm sorry I couldn't be more illuminating for you. Mm, I think you're pretty bright. Oh, well, thank you, dear. <laughs> And if you ever need anything else knitted or um, something like that, I'm more than happy to oblige. Okay, I'll let you know. Oh, we could even maybe do something with those rings. Oh, that might be nice. I'll think on it and I'll get back to you with something. That would be great. Else. Thank you. <laughs> of course, dear. Uh, you have uh, fun floating around then. I will. I suppose. All right. Ta. Okay. Turn around. As you head back inside and start heading down the hallway, you hear from behind you, Pappy always said that if you can't explain something simply, then you're hiding something. And you turn and you see the lantern standing mm -hmm. there against the wall. Well, explain to me this, dear. How would you express... Uh, 
social climbing and information brokering to a narwhal. You take people's secrets and you sell them. Or keep them. And blackmail people with them. I like to think of it as safekeeping with a... Exactly. Thing. You can't keep it simply. So you're hiding something. Oh, I didn't say there was anything wrong with hiding something. Of course not. All of the most interesting people I know are hiding something. I don't think Jeremy is. Well, Jeremy's incredibly sweet, but... That's not the kind of interesting I mean. I just bet he's not hiding anything. It's refreshing, isn't it? Not really. You enjoy being contrary. Me? Never. <laughs> Did you get anything fun on our trip? No. Just useful. You should have a little fun sometimes, dear. I have lots of fun. Just not on this trip. Too valuable. What? Where am I going to find Mithril anywhere else? Hmm, fair. If you don't mind... I do. Well, uh, I'm going to ask anyway. What are you doing... On the ship, exactly. What was your... Um... No, that's not the question I was expecting. You are <laughs> full of surprises. I try. Oh, I'm sorry. I still mind. I'm not going to answer. Fair enough. I am curious, though. Mm, well, that's my understanding. You're curious about a lot of things. Well, people, are, people are my favorite thing. Why wouldn't I want to know everything? Because it could get you killed? I would Lots be my guess. get you killed. I've been through my share of things. I can handle it. And if it happens, it happens. Mm. Well, good luck to you. You too, dear. See you around. <laughs> I fully expect to turn around and see you at some point. Hopefully. <sighs> Curie just <laughs> sighs and files away obtuse and vague, or obtuse and contrary into her uh, little Rolodex of adjectives for him. All right. Anyone else have someone they want to interact with? Piper. Uh, Piper wanted to go visit Measle, Uh with Lilac being um, room confined. Um, All right. She kind of wants to retry that conversation, perhaps. And it's not somewhere she normally goes, so she's trying to put a good foot forward. Okay. Um, so Niesel is uh, probably in one of the common rooms. I'll just kind of poke her head in. Um, hey, how, how's it going? It kind of starts up a little bit. Um, uh, oh, uh, uh, hello. How are you? Um, I'm doing okay. That's good. Um, come in. Oh, it's Thank you. Common room. I'm sorry. No, no, it's fine. Have you have you met my new friend? Uh, no. And he and he, he kind of like reaches down and sitting in the seat next to him, he pulls up this fairly large jellyfish-like creature, but it's all completely covered in in fur. Um, it is. Uh, some sort of floating creature about, uh, about the size of a, a the, 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 the fully around is about the size of a, a small side plate, about eight inches. 
and completely with legs and everything dangling down. It's about 12 inches tall. And it, and it just kind of like tickles its tentacles and it just kind of floats there and just. That's pretty cute. Well, I thought so. Did you name it yet? I don't know what to call it. Hmm. hmm. Well, how did you decide on names for your other animals? Do you have a naming convention that you go with? Or I've never named any of... of my animals. Oh. I've never had a pet that's mine. Oh. I I had a pet. How, how do you... Or have a pet? Had? I don't know. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, sorry, you were you were asking no, something. No, what, what's I your apologize. what's your pet's name? Cricket. Cricket. Oh, that's fun. Is it a cricket? Uh, no, he's a snail. <laughs> that's but cute. When when he would eat, it sounded like crickets chirping, and so that's why I named him Cricket. Okay. I, I, I just don't, I don't know how do you give a name to to someone well, it's an interesting question I mean you can name someone I mean you were given a name too it's it's very simple like you would name anything that you are you care for and are close to like a, a I, I, child kind of thing I, I didn't I changed my name oh um I'm sorry I didn't mean to I I, I, didn't, I didn't like my name so I changed it but how do you give a name to such a creature that, that can't change their name if they don't like it well I can't just say hey you little fuzzy creature and Hope that it comes every time. I think that if you spend enough time with it, that the right name will come to you. And it'll be like a bond that you've created with it. And you'll know what's right because of how it makes you feel. Yeah, that sounds that sounds right. Um, you'll when you chose your name. Was there a moment of clarity? Like, yeah, this that's that's the one. That's that's me. No. You... What's it like to be able to change who you were born as? I'm sorry, that's a really personal question. I no, I just I don't think that I did I think I just cast off who I wasn't I like that casting off who you're not that's um that's a really powerful thing Measle to be able to do that I, it takes I'm, courage I'm really sorry I didn't punch you the other day it is okay you don't have to I, I hope that Lilac's not so mad. I think they'll be okay. I, I did. I wasn't trying to say it's because you were short. I just. I. I really. I. I can really hurt people. I understand. I will make a point to not ask you to spar, but if you ever decide you want to, that's totally fine but you never have to. 
I'd like to be your friend, even if it's talking about. Oh, I, I I like being friends. I'll be friends. I've, I've never really had many real friends, but um, I just, I can't spar with people. I, I will okay. hurt them. I, I've done it before. That's right. So we won't spar. We will talk about adorable, tentacled, fuzzy animals and casting off who we're not. And he, he kind of turns to the uh, uh, the creature and, and uh, leans over, just kind of gives him a little a little tickle and, and the creature kind of nuzzles up against his uh, his hand a little bit. Um, the his fur is, is almost very similar to mine. Just wish it was a similar color. It'd be kind of neat. Hmm. Uh, no. Um. Prestidigitation or something might be able to change his fur color. No. Thank you, though. Hmm. I think if I could wear him like a toupee. He like he like lifts him up and like sticks him on his head. And the little tentacles come all the way around, and he'd have to tuck those in. That is very cute. Bye. I used to put cricket on my shoulder until I got too big. How big is your snail? Yeah, no, um, no, all I've ever seen has been about that big. He's a giant snail, so he comes up to about my knees. But when he was a baby, he could ride around on my shoulder. I bet he misses it. I miss it, too. Can I tell you something? Sure. I'm really happy we got lost. Can I tell you something? Yeah. I am too. And I think we're gonna end that scene right there. <sighs> Fuck. All right, who's next? <laughs> Kyle, Dietrich. Um, I think Dietrich, um, after his uh, recent uh, dream, would uh, go to uh, speak with, I think, the one person that he knows he could absolutely lean on um, for any sort of guidance. Um, Dermot. Um. So this this could coincide with what I was going to do. Mine sure. wasn't actually going to um, didn't need a, an RP. It was more what what I what was happening. Um, I was going to go down to Mo and offer to play hide and seek with him. Um, so let no, that's perfect. So you add, so we're gonna start there. So as you are coming down um, to uh, to see Mo, um, you're just coming down the hall towards towards his place, his room, uh, and uh, and he is standing in the doorway, like kind of just looking up at the ceiling a little bit kind of tilted to one side, his big round body, eye, everything with these long spindly arms and legs coming off, uh, twig-like. Uh, and he's just like, like staring, standing there. Uh, is, is everything okay, 
Mo? Shh. I mean, uh, Felix? Shh. And, and I stink. Dietrich, as, as you were kind of searching the ship for, for Dermot, having heard these comments way down here, you start heading this direction. You kind of come down the stairs and see Dermot halfway down the hall. Then at the end of the hall, you see, uh, uh, you see, you see Mo just hanging out. Mo, what are you doing out here? Shh. And he takes like a step in the hallway and he kind of like just takes the ball like shape of his body. So basically his shoulder and pushes it against the wall. But it's also technically his ear. I take a step forward, like uh, one step. And like he, he kind of leans back against the wall. He pull, reaches up with his left arm, pulls his arm out of its socket and then leans up against the wall again. Are you holding up the ship? Shh. I'm listening. Pretend it's a library. So Dietrich is going to get down um, on his on his knees and put his ear up against the other side of Mo. Make a perception check with advantage. Okay. Is his echo echoing around because he took his arm off? It's a, a total of 19. So you hear this. Well. Is that? It's a sewing machine. All right. <laughs> Someone has a sewing machine on board. All right. S significance. He just turns and like looks up at you. Puts his arm back in its socket, grabs you by the collar. It's a sewing machine. I guess all that matters now is where I go from here. Oh. Uh, would you would would you like us to find it for you? Oh yeah, that would be great. Could we go find out who it has now? Right now? Can we go find it, please? Oh, uh, hold on. Okay. And he runs back into his room. Is it all right that people see you wandering around? He comes back out with his this like Santa sack, like this huge bag over his shoulder. Huh? Don't care. Let's go. Uh, uh, he's I, leaving I, the doors open. Should I, should, should, I, should I call you Mo or F or Felix while we're out? Mo. Felix is the ship. I'm Mo. Thanks. All right. I, um, come come along, Cabbage. Mo well, stops and just kind of turns and looks at you. Oh, Did you just call me cabbage. Oh no, that that is my new my new butterfly globe. It's it's cabbage. Oh, okay. Another crew member. I'll have to keep track. They don't they don't <laughs> talk. They just they just give off light. They're a nightlight. You know? I still like to keep track of all the new crew members. Oh okay. I'm gonna follow you. Okay. Well, where are we going? I don't know where we're going. Um, uh, Dietrich, what, what did you come down for? Uh, I was, I was hoping to have a moment of your time, but I think we've stumbled oh. onto something much more important. Much more yeah. important. Thank you. Um, let's go help him out. Right. I have like Perfect. two years worth of projects to complete. Thank you. What kind of pro involving a sewing machine? Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, while we're on route, do you mind if the two of us converse? Where are we going? He's just standing there looking uh, at you. Uh, uh, um, I think. Do we know that Darcy got the sewing yeah. machine? Like, is that okay? 
Uh, right, we're going to um, Darcy's cabin. That's the Diablo. Third door on the left. I'll go. Bye. And he just starts running up the stairs. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Perfect. I like Mo. I don't. I don't mind him. Sometimes. I think it's all right. Anyway, um. So. I've been having these dreams and they're rather unsettling. So I was wondering if you might, I don't know, um, ways to um, process dreams. Right. Oh, um, Mo. Yeah, um, a lot of my dreams are are, are frightening nightmares, but uh, I I try to forget those. You, right. Um, why don't you tell me about your your dream and we we can talk about it. Well, you know, it's. It reminds me of something that I used to know, and I think I understand more of it, and by understanding more of it, it makes me scared of it. Oh. Uh. It did like it, you understand more of it because of the dream, right? Are you afraid of it? I wasn't before. Oh, and now you are. Right. I think that's why I'm so. I don't know quite how to process. Okay. If it. If it's like. Okay. Look. If this is something that when you're in a room and you and you turn around and sometimes it's there and it's dark and it follows you around everywhere, you, you don't need to be afraid of that. That is a shadow. Yeah. Is it that? No. <laughs> no, oh. it's not. A, it's not a shadow. No. no. Oh, okay, because I was afraid of those, and then and then I found out that I shouldn't be. Right. And who told you that you shouldn't be afraid? Like, was there any sort of, you know, mantra that you recited or anything like that? Oh, I don't. I don't remember exactly. Um, I, it's part of my past. I just remember that I'm like the idea not to be afraid of it. I don't. I don't remember much of my past. The idea not to be afraid of it. I like that. It's almost though even the darkest night will end and the sun will rise. Oh yeah. Every day. I see what you did there. That was that was clever. One of the best ones yet. So, um, well, I'm um, I'm not sure if I if the, any of this is operable, but uh, mm, th thank you for your time. Oh, I, okay, uh, you didn't even tell me what it was about, but you that's okay. I, I'm glad I helped. It's a song. The song is 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 frightening you? No, I, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it, it's just something it reminds me of. 
Oh, like you wrote a song and it's reminding you of something that scares you now. I suppose, yeah. It didn't scare me before when I had written the song, but it does now. I see. Um, you could rewrite it. Rewrite the song. I might be able to work with that. Yeah. Workshop a few ideas, you know. Right, perfect. Perfect. I could do this. This should work. Oh, I'm Thank glad you, I could help. You're welcome. Um, uh, I... You know, uh, Dietrich, you're very talented. You, you can do this. You're, you're so talented that you remind me of a bowl of lentil stoop, soup on stilts. Uh, big pardon. You're, you're tall and a bowl of lentil soup on stilts. <laughs> I, I was, because of your talent. Um, mm -hmm. uh -huh. I will, I will savor that. You don't have to, to use that as your lyrics. It, it, There's a lot of room for lentil soup, so yeah. Oh, I will, I will stow that away for another day. <laughs> okay. Thank you again, what? damn it. Yeah, Genuinely. But, um, what was the name of the song? Just in case I hear it. Or if I dream about it. I didn't have a name for it. Oh. I don't know if there is a name for it. But maybe naming it might help too. This it can song. help you identify with it. Song 2. No. All right, well, I suppose it's time to, you know, uh, put pen to paper, as it were, really digging deep. Hmm. Where, uh, are you coming? Uh, we're almost to the third door on the left. That's, that's where the bunny is. You do slow, don't you? I have a limp. Uh, so, were you guys planning on going, still going to the to to Darcy's place? Just yeah, like, uh, I totally like, have to look around. The... Uh, as you, as you guys kind of get down to that hallway and look down the end of the hallway, um, you see uh, Mo there explaining uh, who he is, or maybe to uh, a very confused looking Darcy who thought he had met everyone on the crew. Uh, and, um, and, and continues to kind of, they, they're just kind of bantering back and forth. And, uh, Darcy kind of turns his head and looks down and sees the two of you and, and has this kind of questioning, like, well, well what I'm is the question? I, th I thought I had met everyone on the that. crew. Who is this? Mo. And and Mo is a part of the crew. Someone to be trusted. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, my friend. Kind of, like looks really hopeful. Um uh, oh, all right. No one else to talk to. Uh and he steps aside and, and Mo like runs in. Uh, to their little tiny room, <laughs> little ten by ten room, uh, filled with crates of wine and things, uh, and and, uh, and they shut the door and they start talking. Well, nothing bad can come from that. Oh no! And 
We did our part. Go us. Sure hope I get Niper out of it. I was going to say to them that they can ask Felix if Mo is is okay as part of the crew. But I I thought ahead. Yep, uh, that might have ended poorly. I almost did it just for the laugh, but yeah, I like to make people laugh. All right, I'll I hope you. I helped you, Dietrich. I, I don't know if I did or not. I never know. I'm, I'm not sure if you did or not either, but that's not. I, I think you might have. That remains to be seen. I think. Or heard. Fair enough. Uh. Right. Oh, all right. Um, I'll just go play hide and seek with myself. <laughs> just a really long or a really short game. Just so I am aware, um, so that I can tell Flora if she cannot find you at all, uh, where will you be hiding? I'll probably be under a table. That's a good place to hide. Well, best I'm of not, luck. Yeah, I'm not sure which one yet. Oh, and you can always... Um, I'll be within 60 feet of a butterfly. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Right. Okay. Uh, come, Cabbage. Chive on. All right. Laura, do you have anyone? Um... I didn't have anyone specifically that Flora wanted to speak with necessarily, but she would have been uh, working in her room in the little garden she has now with the door open in case anybody wanted to come see her. And um, she's going to open her necklace and plant some of the seeds from home. Okay. Not all of them. Okay. But a couple because she really misses home and like home home, not Ashport. Alrighty. Um. Hmm. Hold on, I'm trying to decide. Don't need that music for this. <laughs> um. So uh, as you uh, as you're sitting there uh, planting um, and, and tending to your small garden, um, say it's been a bit later in the day. Peanut uh, appears. Yeah. Peanut appears. Uh, and uh, Hello, as Peanut runs in t through the door, the open door, um, creeping around looking into your room is Mo. Uh and the sewing machine under his arm. <laughs> <laughs> like a TV. <laughs> oh hi Mo. Uh he has uh what appears to be um the the a a, a long uh wooden uh dowel of some kind that he looks like he's holding as a weapon. Oh did you did you see some sort of creature come in here? Do you mean peanut? He, he like stands up and and puts the stick behind his back. It's still sticking up past him. Um, yeah, sure, peanut. Well, yeah, peanut's part of the crew. Oh, He's right. The oh, that's peanut. I've never case. seen peanut. He drops a stick behind him. Oh. So, well, what are you doing? He kind of walks in and takes, just kind of <laughs> takes a seat. Uh, just working in the little garden I got when we were working with the Dazlos. Are you... Are you not worried about anyone seeing you out of here? Oh, no, I'm room? out now, evidently. Everyone knows about me. It's all right, though. I, I got a sewing machine. Well, mm -hmm. I got access to a sewing machine. He wouldn't trade it. 
Oh, oh, that's right. Darcy got one. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, we're we are taking right. a break. Whatever that means. You know, to sleep or something. I don't really understand it. Well, I mean, a lot of organic creatures do have to sleep. Seems like a waste of time. I know. I only have to meditate for a few hours. It's a lot more convenient. I have to do that. I have to work out math problems. Worst yeah, it's a lot sleep faster. Sleep schedule ever. It's very relaxing. Yeah, I could see that. Math's never been my strongest suit, but I like meditating and thinking about something. I like your garden. Thank you. Why are we carrying a stick? I thought there was a, a beast on board and I was going to kill it, but it turned out it was a crew member. Oh! Same old, same mm -hmm. old. Yes, please don't hurt Peanut. No, I, I'm finding out there's a lot of small furry little animals on board that I shouldn't be hurting, so I'm not going to do pest control anymore. Oh, you mean like Measle's new pet? The furry squid thing. I was talking about Measle. He's a furbolg. Oh. That was a joke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. I haven't talked to people in a few in a little while. It's, it's been a couple of years. Have you been in that room for a couple of years by no, yourself? No, this, this room hasn't existed for a couple of years. I haven't mean, I mean, talked to people socially. All business. Oh. Well, you don't have a lot of business anymore. We're just traveling and you're welcome to come visit and talk with me if you like. Oh yeah, now I can roam the ship and the captain knows about me. Everything's better. Well, the captain wasn't too happy. And he says he's going to... Ring that boss's so and so's neck, but whatever. Well, but that's she, not she your was really fault. grumpy. Yeah, it is a bit weird that they decided to have you hold up in a room instead of just figuring out a way to make it work. It's really complicated. I've been trying to kind of sort of make it work. I I may have been hired to make it work at one point. But, um, yeah, this was a better solution that, that actually ended up working, sort of. Yeah. Okay. So do you like plants? Not really. Do you like my garden because it's even? <laughs> um, I was trying to make small talk. I actually really don't like your garden. I don't. I mean, it's okay as far as gardens go, but I, I know I don't like gardens. They're too chaotic. That's fine. I can understand that. I've got everything in its place. Yeah, because you you can't like you plant a seed and then it's gonna grow like 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 you plant it there and then it's gonna grow like like right there and it's like that's that's too much chaos. He like he like moved his finger like like a centimeter. I can see it, Chini. Uh. I'm a druid, so it's a little easier for me to keep everything controlled where I want it. I've got a bit more of experience with it than the average person. But there are some chaotic changes of, you know, a bit of a distance between where you put it and where it grows sometimes. Oh, okay. But That's... they're really pretty. I like the colors. I, I take a lot of inspiration from gardens and plants when, I, when I'm sewing and making clothing and of course, you know, I, I love flowers. I mean, I got flowers painted all over my face. Body. Mm -hmm. I like this one in particular. She points at a, uh, like, purpley looking flower. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> so, what do you do with, with plants? I don't understand. Like, you say you're a druid, I don't really know what that means. I mean, I've known some druids in my life, but they really, like, turned into weird things. And small fuzzy creatures that I wanted to try to squish, but... <laughs> they probably didn't like that very much. 
Oh, no, um, I, I was too scared to fight things before. Gotcha. Uh, well, I do have different um, abilities with animals, and I'm actually a circle of wildfire druid, so I work really well with fire. Oh, I, I don't and, like fire. Uh, neither does Dermot. And um, there's some plants that need fire, though, to actually um, germinate, to actually be able to have little baby ones. Oh my god, it's me on the screen. Oh no. Holy crap. What? What? <laughs> oh my god, Matthew. Yes! I'm delighted! <laughs> Flying so spaghetti monster, it. give him strength. <laughs> I love Courgette. I love Courgette. I love it. I feel like I should have posted my joke about a minute early. <laughs> Matthew's suggestion is just like epic to you. I'm so excited. Look <laughs> in space is amazing right now. I'm getting traumatic Muppet <laughs> Christmas Carol flashbacks. Logan's drinking his water going. Why isn't there vodka in this? <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. This is wonderful. Thank <laughs> you for this gift. <laughs> this amazing gift. <laughs> uh -huh. I have to get back to that. I, I, I'll be there in a second. Um... <laughs> It's gonna be a long walk, but <laughs> Matthew, I know where you live. Many of your homes are made of wood. Um <laughs> and he has netherrack. <laughs> Trying to wrap my head around that. I never thought you could do Stranger, well, no, you've, you've tried to outdo yourself every time, and you are continuing to prove it possible. Um, okay. Wonderfully so. So Wonderfully uh, I'll get so. to that in a second. Um, for those that are confused right now, we just had $20 donation, which will be the introduction of an NPC, uh, which I will get to in, in just a moment. Um, okay. So, uh, so but yeah, you're, you're sitting there with... Um, um, Thing. So, uh, so does that mean that? Yeah, I could even forget. So, does that mean you can uh, you can control wildfire? I don't really understand. Um, I do have the ability to control fire somewhat. It's not perfect, but I can, and I have a wildfire spirit that I can summon. Another pet. Um, she's kind of like a pet. She's more like a. Uh, an anim well, a spirit that's willing to help me occasionally for a certain length of time. She looks like a fiery fox, though, so she's very cute. Oh, well, that's that's very cute. I like foxes. They're, they're very yeah. cute. She is, uh, yeah. Oh, my God, their fox eyes are very cute. They they're, they have these little eyes that they, they look at things with. Two of them. That's really mm -hmm. impressive. Hard to get two I of them. I know. It's amazing how many things have two eyes. It's hard. For, it's hard. For, my species is really hard. I, I feel like depth perception would be a problem. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> oh, it only gets hard once you have three eyes. At least I'm told. When you have three eyes... Oh, yeah. My people can have up to six. That's a lot. How come... Is it different groups that have different numbers? Oh, yeah. You, you, you basically, it's like getting a promotion. Oh, so you get promoted and you go from having one eye to two eyes? Well, you, it's sort of like a merger. How do you mean? Well, when when a mommy monodrone and a daddy monodrone love each other very much, 
Um, at least that's how it was explained to me. They no, we we because of of the the great algorithm, we kind of combine our essences to to become different and better for whatever we need. But see, uh, two mono drones oh, okay. can become a duo drone, and then a, a duo drone and a mono drone can become a tri drone. Okay. So it's kind of like reproducing and making a baby, sort of. Except exactly the opposite. Different. See, we've all existed since the beginning of time, and now we're kind of becoming one. Okay, so it's like you're putting the pieces back together? Sort of. But we really don't want that puzzle to be... Well, you don't want that puzzle to be completed. Okay. I mean, you can kind of do that with plants, actually. You can do grafting. Right, but out of one you plant, can take... you can get more plants. With us, it goes back. I mean, that's true. That's true. It's a different... Uh, mechanism, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. What kind of plants do you like the look of? Mostly flowers. And asparagus. I really like asparagus. I don't like to eat it. And I don't like it when people eat it around me. But I really like the way it looks. <laughs> asparagus is a good one. It's an interesting looking plant. Um, I've got some flower seeds, actually. Only before it flowers, these though. these are flower seeds. The asparagus. Oh, I don't yeah. like it after they flower. Mm. It's a bit stranger looking after that. Mm -hmm. um, some of these are flower seeds, actually. Mm. What else you got? Um. Well, I've got the flower seeds. Uh, this is a special kind of apple tree. She points it in one corner. Mm -hmm. Um. I like apples. I'll have to move it when it I like gets. making pies. I love cooking. Mm -hmm. I don't get to cook here. You could talk to Chef Souffle nope. and see... No, oh, thank you. Hard pass. <laughs> All right. Why is that? She's scary. I mean, she's a bit territorial of a kitchen. She's always got a knife in her hand. She's the chef. She's not always cutting meat or anything. She uses it for emphasis. No, thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, I I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me, and I, I like uh, I like hearing all about your new little friends and your fryer friend and and your and your scary fires and and your ugly gardens and all of that. <laughs> well, thank you. It was nice talking to you too, Mo. Um, and don't forget to say hi to Peanut the next time you see him. Oh, hi, Peanut. I blinked. I love Mo. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I, I feel like Flora is used to this because she lives with Dermot. Um, <laughs> There's a wavelength that's very compatible uh -huh. here. Yep. All right. It was nice talking to you, Mo. Um, uh -huh. I'll let you know when the flowers bloom so you can come see them. Yo, yeah, I would love to see them. I'm thinking about taking up uh, sketching and painting more, but not like face painting, but like actual painting. Like, like what do they call it? Yeah. Painting? That. All right. I mean, that could be fun. We could definitely use some more color around here. A lot of it's just dark I did metal. bring a lot of pigments. And a lot you of You could dye. talk to the captain. She... You could talk and to the captain. a lot of um... fabric. Oh, boy. How long do um, people need to sleep long... again? Uh, generally speaking, most people sleep about eight hours, six to eight hours. It's been 27 minutes. You think I should check? Well, was he sleeping or did he just need a break? Because it's different. I should ask him. Oh, we got a pop goes the peanut. Um, <laughs> you should check with him. And but make sure if he tells you he... If he needs a longer break, that you go away again. All right. You don't want to make him angry because then he won't let you use the sewing machine. Well, that's a really good point. And please roll me. Do you know what to roll me? Mo uh, really doesn't 50. like 
disorder. And then... <laughs> One of your party members disappears. Weird. That's weird. <laughs> Two of them disappeared a few minutes ago. <laughs> Tessa, you're you're all alone on the top level. Oh, uh, uh, stretch out. Dermot uh, comes <laughs> into your room, Flora, and just jumps under the table. Just completely still. So as uh, as Dermot does that, uh, <laughs> Peanut uh, Mo kind of watches Dermot go by, uh, already looking uncomfortable with what's going on. Uh, Peanut sneezes, um, and uh, and and his mouth starts to to widen during the sneeze, and out comes uh, this this gallon pitcher full of milk. Um, that that kind of uh, you catch instinctively uh, as as it does, and Mo just goes, "I'm out," and he just turns and leaves. <laughs> Too much chaos for Mo. Um. Well, that was unexpected. Peanut, are you all right? Okay. I guess we'll take this to Chef Souffle so she can do something with it if she wants to. Damn it! Why are you under my table? The little butterfly I'm floats hiding. in. Who are you hiding from? Uh, Dermot. Oh, are you playing uh, hide and seek by yourself again? Uh, yeah, I, I was. I yes, because Mo got busy. Okay. Do you want me to let you know when you find yourself? Yes, please. All right. You have fun. Be oh real God, quiet. So cute. What a deep game. <laughs> Be know when I find myself. Oh my God. I will be looking for years. <laughs> she sends a mental timer of like ten minutes to go to souffle and come back to let him know he found himself. <laughs> Uh, everybody roll me a d20. Flora, roll two. Okay. Looking for the highest. It's a natural 20. Oh, shit. You're gonna wish you I also got a natural 20. Oh, perfect. An eight. Uh oh. Kyle, roll a d20 and give us the result. 17. All right. Awesome. <laughs> um, so. Uh, Piper and Flora, you two are uh, heading down the hallway. You're both heading. Actually, it makes sense. Both heading to the cargo hold for your own, uh, your own reasons. Um, one obviously the the uh, the garden. The other one for uh, your workout. Uh, you meet in the hallway and uh, and you proceed into. Well, you're walking down the hallway. So, go ahead. Hi, Piper. Hi, Flora. How are um, the plants and stuff going? Uh, pretty good. I got my room one set up all right with some flowers. Um, I actually planted some seeds from home, so that'll be nice. And um, But I should check on the ones here, just make sure everything's growing all right. How about you? Um, Anything uh, fun today? Uh, yeah, just um, met Niesel's new friend. It's kind of cute. That's and I'm um, uh, just going to do the workout. So, got yeah. it. You know, gotta keep up the training. Yeah, I should probably do some sort of exercise while we're traveling around on the ship. I used to get a lot, you know, running around in the forest between where Dimit and I lived in Ashport, but uh, not as much anymore. The ship's not quite as big a distance. Yeah. Um. So, uh. You know, I've never asked Sums you. Up all what, of social what's your distancing. favorite? Mm. What, what's your uh, What's your favorite thing to grow? Oh, that's a good question. Um, sounds a bit strange, I suppose, but probably apples. Oh, of course, it's apples. 
You hear that in your heads. <laughs> but you think you heard it out loud. You're not Did quite you? sure. Did you hear that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did. That was weird. What was that? I don't really know. What was that? Um, oh, that's very rude. You mean who? I'm sorry. Uh, hello? Who is speaking? I am. Thank you very much. Could you be a bit more specific on who exactly I is? Boy, you are very rude, aren't you? You're just I... too ridiculously rude. Let me take a look at you. Come over here. You really have no idea where here is. Where are you? Currently, I'm sitting over here. I don't really know. There's all sorts of plants in the way. Your garden is talking. I gather that. Um, no, she it is heads not over the garden. The garden. It's just one particular piece of the garden. Once again, talking about me in the third person. Like, it's very um, rude. We're on our way. We're trying to find you so we could talk to you directly. Walks towards the garden. It's very big. Um, could you tell me perhaps what plants are next to you? Oh, it's well, let's see. The dirt is very brown. And the leaves are I, green. Okay. Um, it will take us just a minute. Uh, could you, are you tell us when we get close? Are, are you a being in the dirt? Or are you a plant or are you none of the above i feel like i'm playing 20 questions uh, are you animal vegetable or mineral vegetable oh okay well that's in that direction you grow minerals and animals here oh that's very callous no but if you're a vegetable then that means you're not in the fruit section and you're not in the flower section so you're over there fine be logical not a great choice between those three. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So, start. okay. <laughs> when did you acquire seeds that grow crops with a mouth? I never did intentionally. How rude to assume that I have a mouth. Maybe it's a side effect of the special magical growing. Maybe it's Maybe. just a side effect of how rude you are. Can we find me first and then continue the conversation? We're trying, but you're being very unhelpful with very few details. Oh, well, if I could see more of my surroundings, uh, I might be able to help better. Well, then I guess you don't have eyes. You're not a potato. <clears throat> how rude. That was very funny, Flora. Thank you. I spend a lot of time with Dermot. Okay, um... Alright, so we, I guess we just start digging through, well, looking through all the plants I until we find it. I am a does that help? Now, why couldn't you have started with that? And why didn't you ask? Up? We were playing 20 questions, I thought, with my life. Very dramatic zucchini. Oh, dramatic zucchini. Hmm. Oh, that's just something Tessa's writing down just for her own sake. Dramatic zucchini. No reason. <laughs> so you head over to the zucchini just section. Continue. There is only one zucchini uh, that is laying. It is already removed from the vine. Uh, and it is laying there, uh, just kind of uh, laying there in the dirt. Um... Is that you? Is that me? Of course it's me. Hello, it's nice to meet you, oh, officially. You. Uh, may I ask your name? Courgette. May I ask yours? My name is Flora. Really? 
Yes, Flora. well, okay, the full name's Lily Flora, but that's a mouthful, so everyone calls me Flora. Oh, what about Lily Fauna? They're your sister? Uh, no, actually, I don't have any sisters. I do have a cousin whose name is Fili Fauna. Fili Fauna? Yes. Right. Uh, and what about you? The other um, one. Piper. Piper and Flora, my saviors. Why, thank you so much for removing me from the dirt. I pick up the zucchini. Oh, excellent. Bare hands. Perfect. Um, could we find me a more suitable home? Uh, what did you have in mind? Exactly. Um, linens? Cushions? Sort of room. Okay. Entertainment. Um, I can definitely sunlight. talk to the captain. Well, we don't have sunlight here. That's not a thing on the ship, unfortunately. Um, Lovely. How are you growing food? Magic. Oh, rude. All right. You know who might be interested in mm. this uh, zucchini? Uh, this uh, courgette, if you will, uh, Flora, is, uh... Who's that? Sue might be interested in this zucchini. I mean, that's true. Um, but if you're interested in nice linens and conversation, you might like Mo. He likes to create all sorts of beautiful clothing. Oh, that actually is not a terrible idea. And he likes talking about a lot of different things. What is happening to this show? <laughs> Matthew's happening. Red, really? <laughs> one <laughs> week without you, and look what happens. <laughs> um, sorry, what were you talking about? I was completely lost in how ridiculous everything is right now. We were talking about taking uh, Courgette to uh, see Mo, m Master of Linens and oh, Conversation. Okay. See Mo was last season. See Mo, that's, yeah. Yes. Um, all right, so, um, yeah, and Piper suggested taking the zucchini to see souffle. No, I just, yeah, I I'd, I'm just saying, if it's gonna um, be a mouthy zucchini, I mean, true. So, um, um, we should probably talk to Captain Picard about uh, whether where we could find you a room. And inform her about the fact that we've got a new member of the crew. Excellent. I would very much appreciate that. Thank you. Right. She's looking at Piper like, the fuck do we do with this? So, um, Flora, I've, uh, I've heard this thing. And, and Piper gets this, like, shit eating grin on her face. I've heard this thing about, uh, tabaxis. And, and zucchinis. Do you want to see what's true before we? <laughs> um, what exactly is that? If you put zucchini behind the tabaxi, where they don't notice, they turn around and they see it, they get scared and they jump. And I, I think that might be kind of funny to try. <laughs> um, Curious gonna kill Piper. Oh God. <laughs> I think it sounds How about funny. new? Well, uh, I, I worry that Kyori might kill us in our sleep is the only problem. There's that. In your sleep? She wouldn't <laughs> wait that long, let's be honest. <laughs> um, so should we start with the captain then? Yeah, I guess we'll start with the captain. All right. After you. Um, all right, I think she was up on deck and head upstairs.
Great. So you head upstairs um, and uh, find Captain Packard, uh, who uh, very happily sits and chats with you. What do you talk to? What do you say to them? So, Captain, um, this is a bit different. You know how there's all that magic making all the plants grow downstairs in the cargo area? Yes. So I think some of it might have um, affected one of the zucchini plants a bit. Is it grossly oversized? How dare? Nope, just no. very, very talkative. And she holds forth the zucchini. How do you do, Captain? I trust that you'll have accommodations for me shortly. I'm not sure what to do with this. Neither are we. I leave it Nash in your capable hands. All right. Uh, so, Courgette, uh, what kind of linen accommodations did you have in mind exactly? Oh, silk would be nice. All right, I'm not sure if we have that, but we could go talk to Mo because he I might might have a little. What exactly do you want the silk for? Do you want like a bag to wrap I yourself mean, in? A bag? What sort of? Why would, would you ask any other person if they wanted a bag to wrap themselves in? How about just yeah, throwing no, me in some legs, burlap yes. and just carry me out? Do I don't you? Why am I being nice to this zucchini? What's? I mean, Curie did make uh, Jeremy a horn cozy. I bet she could make um, Courgette a very nice uh, bespoke. Zucchini. The word you're looking for is clothing. I would like some clothing. And All some right. bed linens. And a bed, perchance. As soon as possible. Thank you. Where is the empty passenger room that's the furthest from the rest of us? Okay, you, you know where it is. Okay, I head there. <laughs> All right. Right. Um, so we can set you up in here. It's an empty room. Excellent. Um, there's a bed for you, and I'll go figure out the clothing situation. I would much appreciate that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We shall return. You know, I think I have a silk stocking somewhere in my luggage somewhere that might act like clothing all right i hated wearing them i may as well what kind of some use what kind of clothing does a cute a zucchini expect you to give it it's basically a bag there's no legs and arms did you just say onesie <laughs> <laughs> yep more personifying than a sock so Piper will go dig in her belongings for one of the uh, silk stockings left over from her uh, her days at home. And, I mean, I'm short, so I mean, this is at least closer to the correct size than someone else's sock, too. I don't know. What, what are we talking so. about? I don't know. Why is a zucchini talking to us? I mean... I'm going to be the first one to admit that I've talked to plants in my day, but it's not the same. This is rude. Normally plants are just vague. Hmm. Well, let's see if it will accept a stocking. We'll find out. If not, we take it to Mo because I don't know what else to do with it. Alright. 
Let us go see Courgette. All right. Courgette or Curie? Oh, I'm bringing the silk stocking first. Oh, got it. Okay. If, to see if Courgette will accept the silk stocking. Oh my God, Angela. One, make a zook that can talk. Two, <laughs> put a zook in a sock. <laughs> All right. Um, you guys return back to uh, Courgettes? Yes. Uh, we have brought you um, a, a silk garment to put you in. All right. Let me see. Would you like... She'll hold up the, the silk stocking. No, 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 no. Do you think that this... What is that, a sock? Did it you bring a... a sock? Did you bring a sock to dress me in? Does that no, seem to fit in a princess? Arm... <laughs> All right, honey cakes. <laughs> honey cakes. You wanted something that was clothing and silk. We yes. have brought you clothing and silk. No, you have brought me a sock. A silk stocking that was indeed fit for a princess. Mm, the lower class princess, evidently. <gasps> you know what? I think we should take her to Sue. <laughs> Um, I mean, maybe. What kind of clothing would be more befitting of your station, milady? I would assume something custom fit. All right, let's take it to Mo. Mo wanted someone to talk with anyway. <laughs> Why do you hate Mo? You might like having a custom order. That's true. It shouldn't be too difficult to... Um, Alright, alright, alright! <clears throat> okay, I'm cool. Are you? <laughs> All right, Courgette, let's go this way then. Go look for Mo. Your Highness, please. Right, Your Highness. And um, I, I did understand, I well, I didn't really understand, but I assume that the, the captain has some sort of pretense about being introduced. When you introduce me to anyone else, I would appreciate if you use my full name and title. Thank you. And what full name and title would that be exactly? How do you not know my full name and title? Weren't you, weren't I put into your care as a seedling? Literally, I was told, look, here's a bag with a bunch of vegetable seeds. Oh, and that's zucchini. So unless your full name is Princess Courgette Zucchini, no, I don't know your full name. Actually, it's Princess Courgette Zucchini. Thank you very much. All right. Zucchini it is, then. So rude. Look who's talking. introductions. Princess Piper Button Willow. I was in a sack with other realm. seedlings. Yes. You were. Where did you get this sack? From people on Lewy. What is a Lewy? It's the yeah. name of the realm you your seed originated from. I don't think so. Well, where do you think you originated from then? When a mommy zucchini and a daddy zucchini love each other very much. Sometimes they cross pollinate. 
It's fine. It's fine. Just just, just take a shaving and send it into 23 and veggie. <laughs> <laughs> zucchini is our people zucchini is my name can we just i don't want to be around you anymore can we please get me to the tailor sure i'm so sorry mo So you guys head just down the hall a little bit. Um, anybody else who wants to be in the hall and around would be fine. Uh, as you head to Darcy's room, uh, where Mo and, Han and Darcy are getting along really well, actually. Um, their room is completely covered with fabrics hanging, uh, and they are taking turns on the sewing machine and cutting and things. Uh, but they are rapidly expanding beyond the this room. Uh, they're definitely going to need more space soon. Knock, knock, knock. Ah, oh, what? Oh, what? Darcy just kind of looks up with a pin in his mouth and nods. Um, we have someone who'd like to uh, <clears throat> place an order. But, uh, Darcy Dapplehop and Mo, aka Felix, I'd like to formally introduce no, you to ship. Her Royal Highness. I know. I'd like to formally introduce you to Her Royal Highness, Princess Courgette Zucchinini of the Zucchinis. Oh, very, very good, Flora. Do you prefer Flora? No, I don't even her? make people do that for me. And I thank you for that. Um, Mo gets up and, and curtsies, uh, and, and, uh, Darcy seeing Mo get up and start formalities, he gets up and, and starts doing a little bow. Oh, they're so much more polite here. I am in need of some clothing. Darcy looks, immediately looks just confused as all get out, uh, and, uh, and Mo's like, oh, sure, yeah, we can do that. Oh, excellent, thank you so much. All right, please pass me over to, um, to Mo. All right, here you go, Mo. Her Royal Highness is now in your care. Her room is uh, 23B. All the way at the end of the hall from us. Very far away. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I'm really good at making custom clothing. I, I once had to make uh, custom clothing for for uh, uh, a person's pet centipede. Well, then we'll leave you in his very capable hands, Your Highness. Oh, thank you, uh, Piper and Flora. You've done an excellent job. Toodles, sweet cheeks. Piper turns around and leaves. <laughs> Is she speaking to me? Yeah, I. <laughs> well, that was different. Well, I really need to punch something now. You know, same, same. <laughs> oh, the goal. I've never, ever heard someone throw their title around like that. I have. Well, I mean, I'm sure there's people out there. I don't know. It could have been worse. At least she wasn't one of those ones who has, like, six names. That is very true. That would have taken a lot longer. I'm not going to be able to eat a zucchini again without worrying that it's going to talk to me. <laughs> um, I was thinking something similar. I kind of, um... So I really do kind of want to punch something because she was absolutely horrid. 
but also could you please help me check some of the other plants in the garden yep 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 because now i'm worried let's uh, let's do a talking plant check and Kiri walks into the garden wall, seeing both of them talking to vegetables. <laughs> I assume that's how they're checking. Probably. Can you talk? Poking a tomato uh, gently. Hello? <laughs> lifting up a banana. Hello? <laughs> hey, Kiri. Did I miss Curie. something? Did you get into the good stuff? What's going on? No, if I had gotten into the good stuff, you would have heard about it a lot sooner. I would hope so. What are you doing? Why are you why are you talking into those plants? It's a really long story. There is a talking zucchini princess. I wish I was making this up. Same. I am not. I really wish we were kidding. She demanded custom, bespoke clothing as fitting her station, so she's been brought to Mo. Demanded? Oh. Insisted. And she claims that she should never have been in a sack with other zucchini seeds, so she's very affronted and doesn't know how she got here. And She's with Darcy and Mo right now. Oh, God, what a headache. So a complete stranger, vegetable or notwithstanding, demanded things of you, and you did not explain their position in all this. Oh, I seems to me threatened to give her to Sue. I was honestly just trying to get rid of her. Sue would have been an excellent way to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but if she can talk and think and she's sentient, I'm a little less inclined to put her in some zucchini bread. Talking and thinking is a lot lower of a bar than you might think for um, folk of worth. I mean, fair. She even threw her title around and was all sorts of just a headache. Well, how are you supposed to have anyone understand how important you are unless you throw your title around? She's clearly being sarcastic. Uh, Piper just looks uncomfortable. (laughs) Curie. It's not always necessary, though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you have to pull it out, but not always. (laughs) Yes, the zucchini had to pull it out. (laughs) I was Angela not Curie, but take it as you will. So the zucchini princess is currently be sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. It's very hot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We know. We know. What Captain is our life? Packard just left her with us. Obviously. I don't even know. The only thing I could think of is that something weird happened with the magic that makes the garden grow without sunlight and all. And mm-hmm. I don't know what it is because I'm not the one who created the magic that does that. So. Who knows what twisted it? I mean, there's also, you know, Ashport and all the wild magic that happens around this little one, so... I don't think I've ever Did seen a vegetable on the garden? game. <laughs> Did you sneeze on the garden? Is that what happened? Mm. Young man, you have some explaining to do. He sneezed Both up a gallon of milk earlier. Oh god, was it fresh? I mean... And just in time! Roll for please. Like it. I am Peanut. happy to say Curie was leaning right in Peanut's face when she said young Perfect. man. 83. <laughs> I think you're still carrying the milk. You never no, made it. No, I, I took it to Souffle and then I went back and told you you'd found yourself. Oh, okay. And then I was going uh, to So, uh, Curie, as you lean forward uh, to, to scold Peanut, uh, he, he sneezes and does a little coughing sound and coughs up uh, a set of thieves' tools. Um, in your face. Um, Ow. Huh. Thank you for the gift. Yeah. She starts picking up all the little pieces and stuff. <laughs> mm. 
It's actually not half bad. It's almost a complete set. Uh, you know what? Peanut, you keep doing you. And she just pats Peanut on the head. <laughs> he definitely has her picked. <laughs> oh, I needed another one of these. Good. Um, and Kiri uh, takes a sit cross-legged on the floor in the corner. Uh, opens up her own thieves tools and starts comparing the two roles and like picking and choosing the best parts of both of them. <laughs> Please continue having conversations with um with uh vegetables. With veg I'll, with I'll vegetation. Be right. I'll be right here. Have you tried the pumpkins yet? They seem no. to have a very friendly face. No. Not yet. They're the next stop. Hmm. Well, let me know if anyone says anything. I can play liaison. I'm quite familiar with uh, dealing with uh, those of the more noble persuasion. All They're right. Wrapped around my fingers, as it were. Dermot's going to run in and tag Flora. New game! I got tired of the old one. Tag, you're it. <laughs> this, this ship is pretty entertaining in, during our downtime. Anything can happen. And then he just runs away. Who did you tag? Flora. Flora. <laughs> Curie leans over into her bag and pulls out a very small needle and starts screwing it into the top of her cane. Do you need any assistance, Dan? <laughs> she's smirking the whole time, like she's not serious, but... Oh, Flora, there you are. Yeah. Um, Dermot is hiding under a table. Not you need to look for a uh, but. Oh, no, it's alright, Dietrich. I know what you're talking about. He, uh, he came into my room and hid under my table. He was playing solo hide-and-seek again. Oh, yeah, I, I was concerned. He told me that, you know, where he'd be hiding, because, uh, you know, no one deserves to be forgotten. No one deserves to fade away. God damn. No, it's, it's totally fine. I I went back about ten minutes after he showed up in my room and I let him know that he found himself. Curie leans back on the wall, on the floor. Dietrich, did you know that vegetables were capable of conversation? Uh, not for a long time now, no. <laughs> no, for real, real this time. The Nexus what? is a confuddling place. Yeah, um, if you go to Darcy's room and you see him and Mo, they're working on a custom outfit for Her Royal Highness Princess Courgette Zucchinini of the Zucchinis, who demanded uh, custom clothing. I'm sorry, of the Zucchinini Zucchinis, why didn't you say so? I know, of course. I should have mentioned the first time. I wasn't aware that we took royalty aboard. I wasn't aware she... that you didn't have to do anything on the ship in order to earn bespoke clothing. She sprouted up out of the garden. Apparently. Or just like... Like a plant. Hello. Yeah. Right. Piper raises oh. an eyebrow at the I didn't know we let royalty aboard like, Hello? I should probably go find Dermot. He just tagged me. I'm it now. My office just <sighs> ends. All right. I'll be back. Uh, he's probably hiding in the cafeteria under a table. I'll be back. Well, today's been eventful. Right. No luck there, dear. She looks at Piper. You know what? As long as they don't talk back right now, I'm okay with it. Oh God, I'm never going to be able to have a side dish without looking at it a little incredulously again. That's you could be what looking, I said. You could be... Uh, you could be widowing a duchess, for all we know, by eating an eggplant. Heaven forbid. Vegetables, oh. there's nothing safe about them. I've never been so conflicted about... Eating a salad. 
<laughs> well, I guess we'll just make sure that none of the vegetables talk back before we harvest them. Did Although, you... was... it was very strange that it wasn't attached. I'm sorry. She wasn't attached to anything. She was just oh, laying it was just there. A, a loose zucchini. <laughs> Well, that's unrestrained and uncontained. <laughs> Unsecured cargo. That's dangerous. <laughs> Dietrich, I'm confused. Were you conflicted about the salad because you don't want to eat something sentient? Or were you conflicted about the salad because you didn't like salads before, but consuming a salad now might include regicide and that act of anarchy appeals to you? I'm not sure. Yes. That is the very definition of conflicted. I accept that answer. Uh, I'm, is every blade of grass that I've ever stepped on going to come back for revenge? You mustn't think of that. You have to step on all sorts of things to get where you are. Oof, oh doof. Okay. And here, I was feeling better. About what? Our circumstance or something specific? Oh, you know, it's... Yeah. yeah. Excellent answer. Right. Well, I am going to... Um, go see about... Uh, what I can do to be helpful... To... Anyone... But a royal zucchini. <laughs> right. We can all aspire to such heights of importance. Better than a zucchini princess. Oh, you know how I feel about that. Did this Allen wrench look better carved than the other? She like puts them up in front of them. No idea. No, I'll just keep both. It's fine. Piper's gonna wander off and away. Just like, no more. No more vegetables. Climb so every mountain. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, Dietrich. Surmount it's... all obstacles before you. You're supposed to leave them questioning. It makes you sound more pensive and thoughtful and mysterious. You're not supposed to give away the, the meaning. Everyone's got dreams. I've got plans. You're the worst sage ever. Tonight I am, anyway. <laughs> oh, fine, I'll just... You know what? I'll just keep it all. I'll look through it later. I don't know what to do with myself today. I already gave a gift. And I marked Piper, that's always on the schedule. But... I'm not sure. What do you want to do today, Diedrich? Well, I thought first I'll eat some breakfast and then I'll change the world. Small, small goals then. Starts, you know, dream big. Plan bigger. That's from what I'm writing. Mm hmm. Well, I look forward to it when it's polished. Yeah. Good roots, though. Good seeds, there. Right, I can't get the, That's the meat in right. That's a joke, but sure. Hmm. I'm going to take a walk. <laughs> I might accompany you. Feel free, dear. She uh, uses her cane and, and hauls herself up. I heard there was a zucchini barking orders at people. This might be worth a glance. One can only hope that it actually exists because, you know, if, they, if it doesn't and everybody's just I'm going to be be. so angry if they got into the good stuff and didn't tell me. I would not be angry. <laughs> I, 
To each their own. It's not me. Oh, I know, dear. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make light of anything. It's no. Just... It's ancient history. Not so ancient. You're quite spry. I only look at it. Young in the face, but decrepit in the soul. I understand. Right, absolutely destitute as far as, you know, the, the, the pit from which my inspiration comes. Is that another fruit joke? No. Alright. Really, it's just a matter of perspective. The, all of this, you know. If it's a princess zucchini or if it's a, you know, astral narwhal. All sorts of randomness since we've left. I think that might speak to the fact that living at home limits your point of view and there's a lot more going on than our little bubble, for better or worse. Well, it has been said that you can change the world if you change your mind. The kinky bits. Mm. Yes. Well, the sex is in the heel, darling. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that made no sense. No, they did the quote. It's okay. So they just no, keep walking down. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. It just, you know, I, I can't help but wonder what's going to come next. You know? I'm sure something we'll equally leave. ridiculous. But, you know, will it. What's the point? Will it ever matter? You know? They, will we ever get back home? Will we know? And tell our friends and compatriots and return to the lives from whence we came or are we just going to be lost adrift out here I certainly hope not we're a bright bunch of people I would assume we figure something out it would be quite a shame to be taken on a slightly more permanent journey than we signed up for well, death does not discriminate between the sinners of the saints. Will you stop writing? I'm trying to have a conversation with you. Impossible. Everything's a couplet with you. I seem to have had a recent font of inspiration. Well, that's not Thank unusual. you, medic. <laughs> well, that's not unusual for you, dear. Brilliant. If I do say so myself. Not for a while now. What do you mean? Until I came on this ship, I hadn't written in over a year. So I guess I got what I came for. Ashport was poorer for it, dear. But who knows? Maybe the band will get back together without me. Maybe they've moved on. Maybe you'll go solo. Done that once. You know, everything full circle. <laughs> well, you'll have plenty to write about. All right, I think we're going to call that there um, as we're going to kind of wrap up a little bit here because we've got a couple of things to talk about and then i have got a little bit of an epilogue for tonight. But one of the big things is you guys have leveled. Congratulations. Um, part of going through tonight and learning about the, the NPCs and getting to know them a little better, getting to know your characters, was learning a little bit about each one of you and what you do and how you do it. Um, so uh, you are all now level four? I think level four, so that's a stat increase and some other good stuff. Um, so that's amazing. You all have your personal uh, little upgrades. Um, in the future, we'll probably use uh, upgrade moments like Except that. Except for Piper, because for... I have no idea. Oh, shoot. Well, the epilogue's going to include that because I keep I kept forgetting because we actually got into like heavy, heavy shit instead of like actually me doing no that. Um, so, uh, um so I want to talk about that, and then um, I've got now too too many epilogues to go through here, and then we'll go ahead and do our wrap up. 
Um, but Piper, we'll start with you. Uh, so Piper, when you get back to your room, um, just after the ship spell jams out of wild space and back into the Nexus, the next time you go back to your room, they're sitting on, uh, on your table is a little note card. She'll pick it up and look at it. Uh, and on it, it says, uh, in, uh, in Gnomish, in your native language, um, don't worry, this magical text, uh, was meant to appear only after you left our space. Thank you for your story. We hope this satisfies our debt to you. And it's got the symbol, uh, from the trading group, uh, who could name it, of course, I've forgotten off the top of my head. Um which was the... The Dazzlo. Dazzlo. The Dazzlo people. Uh, it's got their symbol underneath it. Make a perception check. Uh, that is a 13. Uh, so, uh, you don't notice it right away, but after you kind of take the paper and you go and sit down on the edge of the bed and you're kind of a little confused, you see underneath the table stuck up on the underside of the table is a very large kind of curved shadow. Uh, and after a moment of getting some light there, you see that it is a giant snail. Um, and it is not just any giant snail. You're pretty sure this is your giant snail. Uh, and Cricket uh, seems to be affectionate towards you in all the ways that Cricket is. It knows all of Cricket's tricks, answers to Cricket, whatever it did before, this being seems to do that. She has herself a good sob holding her, like, just unconsolable, just holding this, this snail, just... She's big crocodile tears. She's so happy. Both Piper's pet and her face are now slimy. Yes. <laughs> yes. <Stop. laughs> ugly crying over the snail. Yeah, she's, she is absolutely ugly crying over the snail. It is probably very loud. <laughs> but she is so happy. Dietrich. Like, I don't even know how you got here. Dietrich. Yeah. So you have an interesting day. You have this new sense of purpose. You've got some ideas. And you go back to your room. Once you're alone, you shut the door. You pull out paper and you begin to write. And you spend the entire night feverishly writing. Over and over, paper after paper, torn up, crumpled, thrown to the ground. You get angry. You get scared. You start to feel sick. You've gone through nearly every paper you have. You start to write in books. When you run out of the two or three books you have in the room, you start to write on the walls. You, you write on the back of the door. You write on the bed sheets. You write on the floor. At some point, you pass out. Awakening in the middle of the floor, your initial thought was maybe you had fallen off the wagon, but then you realize, no, that wasn't it. And then you look around and you see all the writing that you don't remember writing. And you don't recognize any of it. And that is where we're gonna end for the night. Cool. 
So I want to thank everyone once again for being here. And uh, we will do uh, a quick raid over to some of our friends at Perception Studios, probably. I'll go take a look uh, while we do our exit credits. Uh, go to World Anvil and go to Die Hard Dice. Visit our sponsors uh, because they need uh, help just like everyone else does right now. So thank you guys. See us tomorrow, uh, Angel tomorrow for the Power Hour. And mm -hmm. see us Thursday uh, for uh, No Brainer uh, with Matthew Siebert. Goodbye. Yes. Search of a harbor, won't you join our crew? I like steady, even when it gets heavy, midst the chaos that they'll see you through. Dietrich's disdain hides a gentler refrain to keep our spirits up. And where there's a faint dance, grab a big paper, she's tangy, but she's tough. Hidden inside, discover secrets big and small. And there's Flora to smile through the horror and wonder of it all. Dermot the bear looks through his vacant stare, but they will fluff you up. So won't you come on?